Hello guys, uh, my name is Evans and uh, welcome to this uh, tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue looking at the IGCSE ICT uh, 2016 May-June Paper 3.2. Um, in the last video, we looked at a section on um, data analysis and um, in this video, we're going to take a dive into web authoring. Um, I must say that uh, the files that I needed for this video, um, I already downloaded them. Um, I have them here. And um, um, I'll be able to put up this file down here, um, just under this video. It contains the question paper um, that you need, the mark scheme, as well as the files. And so you guys can practice along. Okay. So um, let's get into our work for today. So the scenario um, is that you are going to help develop a website for the Go Elephant um, Sanctuary to raise awareness of the project. So viewers of the website may have slow internet, so efficient markup must be used. Okay. So like I've always been saying, um, when you talk about efficient markup, you are talking about codes that will make your work um, or that will make uh, the work, um, uh, let me say efficient for lack of better terms. And by efficient, uh, we mean uh, we talk about in terms of speed, um, response time, loading time, and um, also able to work um, on minimum resources um, it's because some computers may be slow. And so when you talk about the um, uh, website which is efficient, it takes into consideration all these other limitations um, that the users would have. Okay, so in our case, we are told that the limitation is that um, uh, the viewers may have slow internet. So we need to take into consideration that these guys would have slow internet. And that would mean that we need to adjust in the way we write our code so that our website doesn't take long to load. Okay. So create a web folder called um, uh, 16 whatever. 32 uh, underscore htm so what i'm going to do guys i tried to work um on this video rather on these files earlier on and um i did um so let me just remove these two here i did try to make um work on these files earlier on and i did um a video and then apparently i found out that um, there was something wrong that I did on the style sheet and I already uploaded the video and um, I thought it just wise um, for me to redo the same video um, just on that section for um, or just for the sake of that section for the style sheet okay um, I initially uploaded the video and I later on discovered that um, one of the components the hexadecimal values was not correct for uh, the previous um, video and I tried to comment that um, but I noticed well um, commenting on a video when there is um, a mistake some people will be just downloading that video and they would download together with the error and I thought why well, just to redo that same video so I initially had the files um, there so what I'm going to do is to um, okay what I'm going to do is to just get a new version of the files so I'll just extract them because I already have them here okay so I will just go ahead and extract them um, where is it so let me just get these files and get all of them okay so and I'll paste them in here. Okay, so what do I have to replace the evidence document? Yeah. So I'm gonna have to close this. Okay, so okay, so there you go. I have all the files that I need for this paper. Uh, the the section on um, web authoring. And um, so we are inside here and we've been told to create a folder called this one. So I'm just going to copy this 
and go to my source files and create a new folder in here and name it by that okay and select all these files they are all image files so you guys can go through each one of them to dis uh, to learn them or to know that you're getting the accurate file but I already did this so I'm just showing you how you could have done um, this one okay so one more thing that I would want to do is that our evidence document needs to contain um, the header we were asked of that in the uh, first part of the exam so I'll just do that mm. ZM556 and lastly 0001 okay okay so we need to save this as um, that one then put our candidate detail at the end okay right so that is done and we are going to go into step number 18 create a web page called um, 1632js.htm I'm going to use front page um, again um, so just click a blank web page and save it as um, gen let me just verify the name <coughs> 1632js.htm okay 1632js.htm and save it in the work area you need to save it in the folder where your pictures are coming from okay so that um, this is going to work out otherwise if you don't save it in the folder same folder as your pictures and some pictures will not load uh, in the browser okay so that is done um, we are going to create a table of this structure okay and um, we need to make sure that um, each cell is identified with a letter, not dimension. Okay, but we we don't necessarily need to put the letters there, but it's just for our hours to know. Okay, so I'll go to design mode, table, insert a table, and let's check the layout of the table. We have four rows and four columns. So just go back here, four rows and four columns okay so I'll specify the width of the table as you can see the first row the width is um, 736 by one uh, rather this the width is just 736 okay the height is 172 so 736 uh, should be in pixels not in percentage uh, don't worry about the height and all and I will just say okay so this is our table and now we need to make it conform so the first row and the last row are merged so the first row we need to merge it and the last row we need to merge it as well then we need to give this table the dimensions that um, the rows and the cells the dimensions that they have so for example we have the first um, row uh, its dimension is 736 so let's go ahead and uh, select this row okay and select tag property and then go to format and um, position if I'm not mistaken yeah and give um, the width uh, give it uh, 730 six okay uh, 736 and say okay so um, give the height um, let's go back here um, cell property give the height specify the height of this cell to be um, 736 pixels not 736 172 <laughs> 172 okay so that should be fine and um, let's go back here so 736 by 132 done with that 
let's go to the individual cells here they are all 184 by 140 so we need to specify that so let's go um, to cell B okay cell B the the height for these cells is 144 okay so you can um, I think you it's possible to select that unless I'm mistaken it's possible to select that but again we can just go ahead and change the individual tag properties to specify the height to be um, 140 and the width to be 184 okay so specify the height to be 140 and the width to be 184 alternatively what you can do is um, specify the height um, rather just the width okay let me, let me I just cancel this I show you nicely you can specify because the height for all these is actually the same so you can go ahead and just um, let's go to um, the raw property Fortunately, I can't um, select here tag um, format and position and the width uh, rather the height is supposed to be 140 which means the height is supposed to be distributed 140 across all these we can do the same thing for this one um, just select here and go to tag property and make the height to be 140 okay because they are all sharing the same height so it's pointless to go and change the individual heights of um, the individual cells we can go ahead and do the now the can go ahead and do the, the TD for each one to make sure that its style is actually 184 so this one um, we need to make sure that the cell property the width is 184 apply this one as well I don't know if it's possible to also se select these but um, um, let's not take risk <laughs> sell property um, 184 as well okay so you see that the 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 sales are adjusting okay so 184 and the last one also is supposed to be 184 so it's sale property 184 so you notice that when you add up all the 184s um, you are actually going to get um, 736 so this one is supposed to be 184 as well even this one is supposed to be 184 now just by looking you can tell that these cells are 184 but we need um, we need to have the feature for the width um, enabled so that it, it can appear in the it can appear in the uh, in the source code because the way it is you see that um, specific specify width is disabled and even though in the background it is 180 but it won't appear in the source code so we need to enable it and give it um, that width so that's why we are enabling and you don't see any change here um, despite that okay so 184 and um, right so we are done with those and um, then lastly that we need to specify is for this one so property we need to specify the height that it's 140 let's just verify the height is 140 okay and the width is supposed to be 7 um, 736 but since it's already set in the in the, um, the the table up there it's still fine okay <clears throat> so there you go with the table let me just maximize this and there you go with the table um, the table borders and the letters showing the table must not appear in the final web page so please this talks about the final web page so um, don't don't uh, bother to change it at this stage where you make the table borders equal to zero not at this stage but in the final stage so before this is displayed in the browser 
um, there may be a section asking you to change the borders or anything or if there is not that's when you can change because sometimes the borders can be changed in the style sheet um, like we will see later on um, that the borders will be changed in the style sheet okay so step 19 place in cell a the image j um, um, rather 1632 logo.jpg and resize the image to 730 pixels wide maintaining its aspect ratio so let's go ahead inside here let's put the image the image is this one so let's just verify that we are in the correct folder um, so paper 3 2 is this one um, source files and here and this is the logo so you already see that it's a big um, image so we need to change um, the um, the formatting of the picture size so go to picture property and where it says specify size the width make it 730 whilst maintaining aspect ratio you will see that the height automatically adjusts okay so <clears throat> remember the height is supposed to be uh, the, the dimensions are supposed to be in pixels as well so just click on ok and automatically you see that this looks beautiful okay next stage um, using the most appropriate image from the, the uh, one uh, 16 or 32 image 1 to 1632 image 8 place in cell uh, B C D E um, one the image of an elephant in a river so let's go ahead and do that in here cell B will place the image of an elephant in a river um, let me just zoom in okay so this is the one and place it in there and the next one we need to place image of an elephant right and then image of a stream in a jungle and image of a garden so image of an elephant like uh, right um, an elephant right let me just zoom in okay here you go and then image of a stream um, there you go and then lastly image of a garden um, image of a garden okay there you go okay so done with these steps um, make sure that the appropriate text is displayed for each image if it is not available so remember guys um, what this is asking us is that when we load this um, website or web page in the browser um, the images if they don't load they should have alternative text um, now when we did the training um, uh, a Cambridge training for um, uh, teachers of ICT um, one of the guys who is an examiner for ICT the guy who is responsible for setting up this paper and he told us to say you know some of the mistakes that students make here is that they just set the alternative text for the four images that they have just loaded here remember you just loaded the images here and you set alternative text for this image for getting this one here and that would cause you to lose maybe your two or one mark here one mark maybe one mark yeah okay so please take note also of the um, logo okay it's part it's an image as well if it doesn't load it should have alternative text so let's go to picture properties go to general and give this one um, image of um, company logo maybe okay say okay and then this one image of an elephant in a river so picture property general um, say image of an elephant excuse me in the, uh, image of an elephant in um, a river okay and um, this is image of an elephant ride image of an elephant ride and then this is um, picture let's see this is image um, of a stream in the jungle so this is image of 
not the stream. I don't know if it's the stream or a stream. Image of a stream in a jungle. <clears throat> okay. And lastly, this is just image of a garden. Image of a garden. Okay. So we've set alternative text for that. So let's go back here. Now, uh, in step 22 in cell F, enter the text elephant bath time. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here elephant bath time. And also, um, so G elephant rides, copy and paste it in here. And um, this one is trick up a jungle stream, copy and um, okay best and lastly chill chill out in our tranquil garden okay okay so that is set and we need to set all the text as style h1 okay so just select the row like that and set it as style h1 next place in cell j the text updated by okay updated by and then um, updated by and then your name okay just verify your name center number and candidate number and set it at style h2 so chikasa evans zm5556 and um zero 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 one and we need to set this as style h2 okay so next thing that we we need to to do is um okay center align the table in the browser and save the web page so we need to center align so let's go to table properties and then where it says alignment specify it to be center and then apply and okay so you see that the table has actually been centered okay that's perfect now this is the section where we have to um, deal um, with the style sheet so we need to save the web page first of all so I'm just gonna hit on save because I already named this web page now create a new uh, cascading style sheet to be used with the website all color codes must be in hexadecimal and make sure your style sheet contains no HTML now I must say here guys like I said in the previous video that I'm about to delete um, uh, so you know that I did that video and I'm about to delete it this is my channel and um, this is the video in question so I'm gonna remove this video and substitute it with um, a new video so you guys you can tell your friends that I changed these videos just uh, for the sake of um, for the sake of this part here okay so I just got the values the hexadecimal values as they are 0 FFF okay it's supposed to be arranged in RGB okay so uh, I'll explain when I come to this section um, okay so <coughs> what we want here like I said in the previous video about the cascading style sheet um, usually um, in the past we never used to program uh, websites using style sheets um, this was a new feature that was introduced some time back I don't know exactly when but um, in my time when I was doing school, we didn't have CSS um, or cascading style sheets. We just used to write HTML codes uh, from Notepad and change all the features as many times as you could or as you wanted to um, from Notepad. But cascading uh, style sheets um, are very powerful in that um, if you have elements in your HTML code, that are repeated and they inherit the same properties for example the same font the same color and they are repeated several times in your code then uh, if not for cascading style sheets then you will have to edit each one of those html code or tag separately okay and um, the guys i think who developed uh, these style sheets they they thought well it's very um inconveniencing monotonous doing the same stuff over and over again when you could just do it once okay so they developed um cascading style sheets a separate sheet which you can attach to your html code and it can overall affect the appearance 
and the layout of your web page okay so everywhere where an element is existing uh, in your web HTML code that element will be replaced by the properties that it re is represented by in the style sheet okay so for example wherever h1 appears in the style in the html code it will always bear this property here so you just needed to define h1 once and everywhere it appeared it will bear this um this tag okay this property so it's very important okay so I find style sheets very powerful and if you can you guys can learn how to just maneuver or play around or come up with style sheets or create style sheets you notice that actually when you even take up programming um, development website web design as your career uh, you are going to enjoy this powerful feature of style sheets okay so we have the style sheet specification here and um, we've been told that we need to make sure that style sheets contains no HTML now, the other thing I want to point out that uh, again, when we did the training um, two weeks ago uh, concerning ICT with um, the exam setters for this paper, they were not hesitant to mention that um, uh, some of the software packages that we use, okay, um, they allow HTML code to be visible when a style sheet is created. And this is the part that they said make sure your style sheet contains no HTML code, okay. So, um, they recommended using um, like creating style sheets with notepad and all um, but I, I, there is a way that you can create a style sheet um, using um, an HTML editor and still not be able to show um, um, the HTML source or the HTML code and I'm gonna show you I'm using front page I'm sure there is a way again um, if you are going to be using um, other uh, software packages like um, like Dreamweaver and um, Express um, uh, Web, uh, web express and stuff there should be another feature that you can you can use so um, let me just go straight into my um, web page so let's edit first of all this first style or well, let me just show you first of all how to create a style sheet okay so you come here um, and could click on page and then go at the far end where it says style sheets and select a normal style and then so this one is a blank CSS um, style okay so we need to define this style so let's just go back to the question paper we need to define this style the background color for the web page is supposed to be black now may I just say here also that the background color in question is represented by the tag body so if i click on body you see that everything behind the scene is made to look black okay that means um this is the background color so for a style sheet also to affect the background color then the body tag must be represented in the style sheet so we are changing the body tag to uh, to black okay so go to style and inside the style look for body and then modify this body go to um, border and go to shading because that's where you find background color and change this to go to more colors and where it says automatic please change it to uh, black which is supposed to be hexadecimal zero 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 okay and say okay and you not you see that um, um, under the description you find background color is hashtag zero 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 and um, here again it will be description bas uh, background color um, hashtags um, and six zeros okay so when you do that you see that um, you will automatically have the you automatically have the body tag the body tag and what modifies this body which is um, the CSS background color um that one next we are going to put um h1 and h2 now again h1 and h2 will have the same uh, font okay so there is a powerful feature in cascading style sheets where you don't define the font for h1 separate like the way this one is h1 h2 and then define them separate like this h1 font 
Helvetica, H2 font Helvetica. That is not efficient, okay? Because the program will have to go through, find where H1 is, modify that, find where H2 is, modify that. That's not good. Um, we can define them in one line. This is called an inline function uh, in, in programming, uh, where you define a function in the same line. Um, everything, the variables and stuff, everything, the function is complete in one line. Okay, it's called an inline function. So we need to define this in one line. So in HTML, to be able to define this in one line or in, 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 in cascading style sheets rather, to be able to define h1 and h2 in one line just click on style now we are going to create a new style and this one is going to be h1 comma h2 so you need to separate these styles with comma and then let's go ahead to the font and modify the font to suit what is required so helvetica if it's not available Arial. if this if these fonts are not available then choose the default sans serif font okay so let's come come back here helvetica and just need to make sure that the name is actually spelled correctly helvetica if not Arial. so put comma Arial, comma if it's not available then just any sans serif font sans serif font okay just verify any sans serif font okay and so it say okay and you will see font family helvetica comma Arial, comma sans serif so what happens is helvetica is not available Arial is picked if it's not then sans serif is picked okay say okay and click on okay so there you go that is there next we need to put the next tag okay so the next tag is h1 and we need to set the, um, the text color to white um, 30 pixels and then alignment center and it should be italic so let's go ahead style let's use a predefined tag because h1 exists so h1 and then um we need to modify it so go to font um it needs to be 30 pixels high and then uh, the font uh, color it's supposed to be white so pick up white here and then um, it's FF FFF F, F. okay that's fine um, then we need um, the font style it's supposed to be italic okay and then the next thing that we just need to do so we've done this one the next thing the last thing we just need to do is under paragraphing to do with the alignment and the alignment is supposed to be center okay alignment center okay right so there's nothing else to change so just verify that you have four properties we have the font size the color the font style and the text align so just say okay and put that okay the next one to modify is h2 so let's just take what h2 is and this is where like i said in the video I made um, the previous video that I recorded, which I will, I will delete. Or by the time that this video will be uploaded, <laughs> will be uploaded, I would have already deleted uh, that one. Okay, so um, so H two has blue component zero, red component F F, and green component F F. Twenty pixels I, and it is right aligned. So let's go ahead and do that. So style HTML tag two modify it and then let's go to font um, it's supposed to be 20 pixels high so put the px as well let's go to color more colors now what i did the mistake that i did was just to click on blue and put ff there uh, that was not supposed to be the case the style in question is supposed to be um the let me just uh, maybe do this so that you guys can see okay so the style in question is supposed to be um the blue component so this is arranged as ara gb okay so you have um let me just put two arrows so that so ara gg and the last one is bb okay 
so that means that um, the first component is red the next component is green and the next component is blue okay so when you do that if you didn't um, know uh, this um, like I uh, I did not that I did know it just slipped out of my mind <laughs> Yeah, it just slipped out of my mind. I just picked the way they were and just arranged them the way they're supposed to, uh, the way they were appearing. So what you're supposed to do is actually to, um, um, you could have just typed um, hex, okay, and then you specify the tags that you have, okay. I have the, I have the, um, the blue component zero, the red component F, and the green component F. So actually, this is supposed to be arranged R G B. I think Cambridge did that deliberately just to have some people, um, okay, go weird, okay. So when you click there, so just change this to F F. This is red, F F. That's green, and the last one is zero zero. That is blue, and the color that you come up with overall is supposed to be um, yellow, okay. So the color this represents yellow and say okay and that should be the color that should come up okay so we have three properties font size font color and the uh, the next one is supposed to be alignment so go to paragraph and you need to do al alignment right okay and that should be fine so so this is um, something that you guys should be very careful um, about and shouldn't rush uh, like I was in a hurry to do that and didn't even notice that these were swapped, okay? So please take your time. When you see these color codes, um, rearrange them um, into the primary col uh, colors, which is red, green, and blue. And then you can uh, represent them the way they're supposed to be. And the last part we're supposed to do is table. And then um, table has got two properties. We are told that um, the grid lines are not supposed to be visible and the borders are not supposed to be visible. Now, the grid lines are represented by um, the TD, which is the cell property, and the borders um, are represented by the table overall. Okay, so what we need to do is to specify an inline function again, one that is going to modify the table um, where we have the TD modified as well as. Um, the table itself modified okay so I'll come back to my style sheet and create a new style in this new style I'll, I want to have let me just put it at the end I want to have um, table comma um, now I don't know guys let me just cancel this I need to make sure because check where the table would have gone I need to make sure that it goes at the end after h2 so style then new style and put table comma td okay like we defined h1 h2 so in other words we're saying whatever we find the td and whatever we find table um what should we do we should um now you can go ahead and go to border and um, modify here um under border but I don't see anything that can change what we want I tried this uh, earlier on and I didn't find that so the best way is for you to just say okay and you have a blank uh, TD style okay like it goes up there I don't know why um, so I'm gonna just have to cut it and paste it at the end there because it's the last thing that we're supposed to modify and then just type border uh, border how do you spell border I hope that's the way you spell border <laughs> so border is supposed to be set to zero okay and there you go your style sheet is set now you notice that you don't see any HTML source code in here even though you will see HTML tags but these are allowed in your style sheet because they whatever you encounter body h1 table TD these are the properties that will be changed so look at how short this style sheet is and it's going to affect a lot of code okay so this is very good um, so the next stage we just have to save um, so table um, save this style sheet in your um, 16 h2 uh, HTML folder use the style the name style followed by um, so I'm just gonna copy this followed by your candidate number for example if you are style 
uh, if you if you are 999 then you you can call your style 999.css okay so I'm gonna just right click and say save and then browse to the STM folder it should be in here and give it the name style0001.css okay and say save okay so there you go next step we need to take evidence showing that the contents of um, showing the contents of our style sheet and place it in the evidence document and we need to make sure that the file name is clearly visible okay so let's go ahead and take evidence of this now the file name is in question is this one style00001.cs okay so take a screenshot i'll just get this okay and the screen uh, this down the file name is there not style name the file name okay so copy and go to my evidence document and place it here okay next step attach the style sheet saved in step 25 to the web page saved in step 24 and save the web page okay so let's go ahead and attach the style sheet to the web page um where is the style sheet okay it's here uh, go to format and style sheet links add and then browse so i'll go to my desktop and um browse to okay this folder and say okay and there you go the style sheet is attached so you should get yellow background here in my previous video i had cayenne as um my my color here and um it's not, it's not supposed to be like that yellow suits actually okay so what we're going to do now is to take evidence of the web page displayed in the browser and make sure that um, we take a screenshot of the web page in the browser and place this in the evidence document so i'm going to run this in the browser uh, of course it will ask me to save it so preview in browser save it yes and um, there you go this is it in the browser and you don't see the tape borders okay so to get a screenshot in the browser make sure that the top part is visible so that it, people can see that it was actually in the browser so just get this part is fine and um, copy it and let's go to our evidence document and paste it here okay so that is it in the browser and lastly we need to um, take a copy of the HTML source code and place it in our evidence document okay so let's go pick up the HTML source code okay so go to code and just select the entire code and copy it and then um, come back here and place it just at the bottom here okay so that's your HTML source code okay so this marks the end of um, the section in uh, web authoring let me quickly just do another video uh, on um, presentation uh, which has to do with training notes um, and that would wind up the last part of this paper okay so um, thank you so much guys for watching this video and I'm sorry I had to redo this video um, the other thing that I need to make mention is that you guys you need to subscribe to my channel ASAP um, because you get notification as soon as I put up a video uh, so like the many guys who have subscribed to my channel they will get a notification that I have put up this video and probably they will know they'll try to look at it and they will know that um, it's a replacement of the other video okay so um, also you need to share these videos with your friends um, your teachers your principal your head teacher uh, and comment out any question that you may have and I'll be able to attend to you if I can okay so thank you so much guys and I'll see you in the next video shortly